Hey, hey, it's Shay Keister, and I'm your host and the founder of Casual Cattle Conversations, a global rancher education company that strives to bring honest thoughts and conversations from ranchers and leaders to other ranchers. Be sure to follow Cattle Convos on social media to have more in-depth conversations around the ranching business and lifestyle brought to you. If you are ready to take your operation to the next level and improve your lifestyle too, send me a message about my Rancher Mind group. Rancher Minds are monthly roundtable discussions for ranchers to learn from peers and experts and leave the call with actionable advice to make changes on their own operations. With that, let's see who our guest is today and what experience and advice they have to offer you to improve your own operation. Well, Ray, thank you for joining me on the show. It is a pleasure to have you on, and I'm pretty excited to talk about scales, load bars, and EIDs today, and really what that system looks like and how they all work together. But before we dive into that, can you share what your role is with Gallagher in the beef industry? Well, thank you, Shay, for having me today. Um, I have been with Gallagher for just a little over 11 years now, and um, my role is the Director of Technical Operations and Learning and Development. And um, over the years, I've served in many different capacities with Gallagher from being in the field and working with farmers directly and dealers. Um, I came into the office and uh, spearheaded our scales and EID business development for many years, and then uh, went on to do um, technical support advisory and then recently, the last year, became a director of technical operations. So um, I've kind of centered my career around technology and being on the uh, helping our customers and helping our, uh, our sales folks uh, learn about new ideas and new things all through the industry. And uh, I've worked with many hundreds of dealers and um, uh, end users at shows and, and in the field. So it's been just a wonderful time to uh, and a great, great group of people to work with. Well, that's awesome and exciting to hear. So like we talked said earlier, you know, we're talking scales, load bars, and EIDs. So would you break down what each of those individual components are and kind of explain them at a basic level? Absolutely. Um, Gallagher scales and load bars are uh, basically a tool for us to weigh our animals. Um, and the load bars are underneath the squeeze chute or in an alleyway. Um, so they stand on that and then they're connected to a scale head that reads the weight and uh, records data that the, the farmer or the producer wants to, to capture. Um, what we have found over the last 25 years of doing this work is that farmers are becoming more and more tuned into the metrics of what their animals are, uh, are performing with. Uh, and a lot of the breed associations are requiring, you know, different metrics to be measured at shoot side. So um, while we don't have to do this by, um, like other countries have to do it compulsory wise, they, they have to weigh their animals and whatnot. The, the United States is um, doing it because they find value in learning about their animals from birth all the way to, to slaughter. I mean, at the end of the day, we just want to know what it costs to grow an animal. So by using scales and EID, we can really rifle in on some of the metrics that it takes to, to grow an animal correctly. Um, in the beginning, um, a lot of farmers and, and ranchers uh, weigh their animals at birth. They take information down about the mom and about the, 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 uh, the offspring itself and to make sure that you know, things are okay. They make observations about um, if it was a hard birth or if it was um, a difficult situation. So it may make a, a difference as to how long they keep that, that, uh, that dam. And, um, and also just to understand from the time it's born to the time it's weaned, how much it's grown. And uh, there's a lot of value in knowing what the weaning weights are and then projecting what the 205 weights are at, just to understand what I'm gonna be at when I go to slaughter my animal. Um, but all of this is taken in with the idea of, of uh, making sure that I recorded all my treatments that I've given to my animals from the vaccinations that happened at the beginning. Um, our equipment allows you to put that information in and associate it with the animal's record, kind of like what we do with a, with a medical record for one of us. Um, it stays with the animal for its entire life. And if you've got good genetics on the farm, you want to record that information as well and make sure that 
you make those breeding decisions that are so critical um, with your with your equipment as well. So weights and genetics can be all tied together in a database that a farmer can review and make note of and um, make a great, great observation decision based on all these facts instead of just, you know, um, just guessing it to what the weight is perhaps and such. Um, yeah, absolutely. And that, you know, I was going to ask you, you know, how do you view the value of data collection in the beef industry? Yeah. And you've already touched on that, but do you have anything else you'd like to add as far as how much value that data can bring to the rancher today? Absolutely. Um, as we work with farmers and ranchers across the country and in Canada as well, um, we have found that um, animals are worth a lot more. Um, if I'm going to charge more for an animal because of its genetics, I need to prove it. And um, if I want to ship abroad, if I want to ship uh, to the EU or to other countries, um, I have to send records with that animal all the way. But moreover, I want to understand, you know, is my breeding effective? And is, is all of this information uh, coming to a point where it shows that the animal has made great progress and could prove to be more profitable for the person that I sell my animals to? So it's become extremely important as, uh, as time has gone on. Um, it's always been important. Don't get me wrong. It's always been important. Um, speaking with um, at the National Cattlemen's Association this last year, we had a lot of producers that came up and said, hey, you know, I'm finally getting I'm finally getting it. the lights come on. I need to take care of this information. I need to buy scales and EID systems. I need to understand what it is that I've done because I can't guess anymore. I can't just assume that things are going great. Um, it, it's one of the other big catalysts of change is well, the price of drug treatments, um, they're very expensive. And if you dose by weight, um, you save a lot of money. Because if I overdose my animals, that's not, that's not doing us any good. And underdosing is just as bad. So when I can dose my animals by the weight that they actually are, wow, it just, it makes a huge difference in the way I operate. Profitability and again, what it costs to grow my animal is all going into that formula. And I can't do it without this metric. Absolutely. Now, something that I've noticed, you know, personally, I've been involved on the seed stock and commercial side of the cattle industry. And seed stock producers are, in a sense, required to take some of these weights and track that information. Mm -hmm. How are you seeing um, weight systems and, or like, you know, the scales and load bar systems and EID systems being implemented on commercial operations? What are you seeing there in the industry? Well, most of the time on commercial operations, I'm definitely looking at induction weights and such as they're being processed in. Um, I'm also taking feed conversion and looking at all the different metrics. Uh, well, you know, if I'm, my rations are correct and I'm, I'm doing a great job with that. Um, so it's a very important part of that, that operation um, from the beginning all the way to the end when I'm ready to send. So um, we have many, many commercial customers that, that utilize our equipment to, uh, to capture that data. Well, that's awesome and exciting to see that, you know, all segments of the beef industry are really onboarding and getting on track with this data and moving forward with that. So where do you see the future of these systems going? I mean, technology is advancing so quickly. So where do you see the future of these weighing systems and EID systems going in the next five to 10 years? Well, a lot of it is about the accessibility to the data. Um, a lot of folks that we talk to want to get it on their phone. They want to see information about the animal that I'm looking at right now. I want to be able to, to grab it from a cloud account, let's say, or uh, just wherever I'm at in the world, I want to know where, where things are at, right? Uh, so if I have folks that work for th with me or uh, at, at my operation, I want them to be able to input data and maybe accessible to it. So there is a lot of push in the industry and the technology wise to get it more accessible. So Gallagher has been on the leading edge of this because we're one of the only companies that's integrated both the equipment and software together. Uh, there's a lot of standalone software companies and there's a lot of standalone equipment companies. But we've taken the leap and hired a great crew of folks that are blending both the, the technology of software and the equipment together and making them talk to each other. And so we get instantaneous results um, wherever we're at. So the future holds 
more of that. There's also exciting things like drones and um, equipment that's in the field that actually automatically uh, helps you weigh the animal remotely or telemetry that is in a bolus that goes into the animal and they uh, it sends information to a computer or to a, to a cloud account. So it makes the job of doing this work with less labor and more efficiency, higher profits, because I have accessibility to my data. And when we talk to groups all over, that's all they talk about is, okay, I make this easier for me to do. I, I need to have more accessibility. I need, to, I need it in my hand. I need it, I, I just need simplicity, but I need to have access to my data. So as we work forward in our future, as our company evolves in our technology, it's about finding new ways to help farmers and ranchers get to what they need and what they need to know most and making decisions on, on what they're doing on their farm or ranch. And uh, it's, it's wonderful, exciting. Uh, we see new technology all the time. There's so many ideas out there that, that are coming to fruition. And uh, we are trying to partner and create an ecosystem of products and companies that we work with that meld good with EID and scales so we can make a complete package. Um, the future holds a dashboard imagining a dashboard with all these different things. One that monitors my water, one that monitors my fence, one that monitors my animals. And then all of this in an, in an app that allows us to pick and choose what we want to do. Once I gather information, customers want to be able to send it to their associations, to the breed associations. My cow calf folks, they want to know what's going on in the field and be able to get to issues that uh, may come up. But I tell you, um, Shay, it's been, it's been a really exciting journey over the last five, six years, and our future looks very bright, and there's no stopping what could possibly be possible um, because people are, are truly thinking through, okay, if I were able to do this differently, how would I do it? How would I make it easier? Um, it's kind of interesting not to get into the weeds too far, but I, I tell you, uh, I've, I've just got just recently went out to uh, a university and um, we did some talking with some students, some grad students, and one of the biggest concerns that they have, and looking at technology in the future, is what am I going to do when I come back to my family farm to make it successful? Because my dad and my granddad and my, my my legacy family is saying, you know, we've done it this way for many, many years and we're doing just fine, right? Well, not necessarily. Um, so we've, we, we've been teaching them these principles of efficiencies and they're studying the little minute things that can be gathered from weights and gathering traits and observations. Because honestly, that's, that's what's gonna help them survive uh, as we go forward. And uh, we're so excited to be a part of that that trending that they they see and Gallagher works closely with those folks and all kinds of different organizations to try to you know bring 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 to light what's possible and make things easier for folks to do uh, the work that they've been doing for years. Well, absolutely, and I would agree with everything you just said there. And so, with that, you know, one thing that I pulled out of that last statement or those last few words were. There's just a lot of information that can be collected and monitored. So how does a producer go about um, deciding what you know, information is going to matter to them so that they know what type of technologies they need to start implementing? Because not every technology or piece of equipment is going to be perfect for every operation. So yeah. how, what are some questions you know, producers can ask themselves before they start making these investments in technology? Well, Shay, it's about, um, you know, when we talk to folks for the first time when they're considering equipment, um, it's a great conversation to have about what do you want to know? Um, we can help them from the very simplest system all the way to the system that records a lot of data and a lot of information. So um, it, it's, it's really that. I mean, what, what matters to them? Their operation may have different types of needs than another operation does. And I think it's uh, once we, we hear what they want to do and what, what's the future look like for them? I mean, you may not be doing EID tags now, but when you eventually may do them, you know, are we, are we putting them in the right package to expand their operation? 
So there's not this cell phone mentality where, gosh, it's no good in a year. It's just obsolete. It, we want to help them grow with that. And our equipment allows them to update and, and expand their, their operation with, with technology as it comes about. Um, and that's really exciting to see them uh, go through that, that whole process and that journey of beginning. And then, you know, and, and we talk to folks all the time that have been in the business for years and they go, gosh, it's time to do something different um, and to make things more efficient. I have a, a, a good customer I met, at, uh, met again at one of the big shows. And um, when I first met them, uh, the husband and wife came up to me at the booth and he says, yeah, uh, we, need a, we need a new scale. Um, I said, so are you, are you weighing your animals down? He says, no, no, we're not uh, doing a lot yet. We're just going to get into this. And um, the, the wife is standing there and she's like looking at him like, you better say everything that I want you to say or I'm going to beat you. So it was kind of cute because pretty soon she says, all right, this isn't for him. This is for me. I am tired of getting things written on a piece of wood or a, a piece of paper that he's missed. He's collaborated the, the whole thought here and I can't read it. It's got blood and scat and all kinds of stuff all over it. I want something that I can <laughs> have him push a button and I get it in the office <laughs> where I like to be. And uh, there's so many folks in, uh, you know, groups like this that, you know, they're, they've been doing it the same way, but they're, for one reason or another, things have got have become more intense for them to report more information, or they want more information to make things, or just doing the books, understanding what the bank wants, you know. So it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a combination of teaching and asking what he needs to do and helping her or them find out what they need to do in the office or how they need to report it, how they need to put it all together so they can analyze their data later. So it's kind of fun. It, it, you, you see this happen all the time. Well, awesome. Well, Ray, is there anything else you would like to add before we wrap up today? Well, Shay, thank you again for having me today. And I, I think it's, uh, it's such a, a great opportunity in our industry right now to see things as they are. I recently came from a big show in, uh, in, in Nashville and the National Cattlemen's Association, the, the place which is full of new technology. So I think that as we move forward, um, folks have options and they have so it's, it's your imagination can go wild, it seems, because there's so many things that you can do to make yourselves more efficient. And um, embracing technology, keeping it simple, and understanding what you want to know, being able to change your mind if you want, and having equipment and software and people to support that is what it's all about. Well, awesome. Thank you very much, Ray. I appreciate everything we got to visit about today, and I'm sure my audience will as well. Well, thank you for having me, Shay. And that's a wrap on that one. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the episode. And if you have any further questions around the topic, take care and have a great day.